We good evening, the Greek community. Good evening to our special guest, and good evening to my tag team. Tamika Stenbridge is on. She's, she's come in from late night ministry in Philadelphia with all the heathens and uh, missed church this morning, but we're, we're forgiven for that. Oh, God. Uh, Sanai is back from across the pond where she's over there doing one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling with, uh, with, with a young aspirant. And we have Bishop Lester Love on with us tonight. Uh, before we get started, send a text message, a Periscope, a Twitter post on Facebook that we're on live now. You can see it later, but it's always best live. We are live right now. This is the D-Free Monthly Webinar. Uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving weekend. I hope you had a wonderful time with your family. I pray that all is well with your family. This is the first Thanksgiving weekend in more years than I can remember that I did not have a funeral. I didn't have one Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, which means that I was able to be at home, at home, at home, in my house, my home, where I pay the mortgage, and where I hope to be free of my mortgage soon, uh, for the whole weekend. And I was able to read and pray and write and talk and read and pray and write and talk, and nobody bothered me. And that was a marvelous, marvelous experience, rare. But the older I get, the more I need that. We're going to talk tonight with a young man who is absolutely insightful, dynamic, He's visionary, he's charismatic, he, he, he talks the talk, he walks the walk, he can preach, he can teach, he can sing, but what I love about him most is that he has a strategic mind. You know, it's one thing to have a vision, but it's another thing to have a strategy. And without strategy, visions are really just dreams. And uh, Bishop Lester Love, I appreciate you. From the moment we met, uh, we connected, I, I could see the wheels turning in your head, and every time we talk, you you, you proved to me that what I saw in you was absolutely accurate. You're a strategist. You're a man who sees the end while people are still at the beginning. And I, I just, I appreciate you. You're an encourager. You, you are a supporter. Uh, you, you're a man who's a great leader because you're also a great follower. So welcome to our D3 online impactful monthly webinar. Dr. Soros, thank you for having me on uh, today, and I um, I really appreciate and thank God for you uh, and what uh, God has given you in, in this critical time. Uh, it was several uh, months ago uh, when Dr. Deborah Morton uh, told me about you, uh, and and she she had you in New Orleans, and she was telling me about your, your calling in the deep free movement, and um, I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it there, uh, but then... Uh, you came and you were invited to share uh, at Bishop Morton's um, retirement celebration for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, and I made my way uh, to your class. And I sat there and I listened intently. And I have to be honest with you, I, I am not very emotional. Not that anything is wrong with it, it's just not my style. Uh, but I sat there and I almost had to hold back the tears because the word that kept coming back to me about the D-Free movement is finally, finally, we've got an answer to one of the most critical questions that has ever been asked in the body of Christ, in particular for African-American people and African-American churches, is how do we get out of debt? And I've noticed that anybody that ever makes a, a real impact in the world They've merged two worlds together, or whether it's uh, whether it's Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus came along, but then Circa de Soleil put them out of business right. because Circa de Soleil combined Broadway and the circus. They said, "You go ahead and have all the animals. We're gonna have the greatest acrobats and combine it with Broadway." And now they put the the circus out of business. The right. Lakers combined Jerry Buss put together entertainment and basketball, right. called it Showtime. So now Denzel Washington goes to the game and Jack Nicholson goes to the game. So I can charge you more for the ticket now. Right. Change basketball forever. Uh, um, our, our dear friend, Steve Jobs, changed the world forever because he made computers cool for everyday people. And what you have done, you have uniquely combined 
sound business practices, even being a former Secretary of State with ministry, this is what I believe has been missing because I teach my people first fruit. I teach my people tithe. I teach my people offering, but I still saw my people struggling. Yes, they got a little bit better, but they never entered into the promised land that I promised them that they would enter into because I didn't have a strategy. But whatever, God loves me so much that whatever I don't have, he sends me somebody with an expertise, an anointing, an education to input these things in our lives. And so now you are the answer I believe. And, and I don't mean this with any form of flattery. You're the answer to Deuteronomy 15 and 1. What God said, at the end of every seven years, there'll be supernatural debt cancellation. And what God does not do by miracle, if a miracle happened every day, it wouldn't be a miracle. What right, God right. doesn't do by miracle, he does by strategies and systems. God is a God of systems, order, and God gave it to you. And you're the answer, and I am so glad to be connected to something like this. I've never been this excited about anything in my ministry in life because I know this is going to be something to set our people free. Well, you know, well, you know thank, you thank you so much. So much. I am I, flattered, I, flattered I, and humbled by, by your enthusiasm and your description. But, you know, I'm old enough to have been trained in civil rights activism. And one of the realities of the civil rights movement was that the, the people who did the work and fought the battles and went to jail and often died were, were people of modest means. And in many instances, while they made the sacrifice, there was a different group of people who, who, who gained the benefits. Mm -hmm. And I watched that over, uh, over a period of years. Of course, all of us benefited from drinking at the water fountain and, and riding on the front of the bus. But, but there, there was a movement to create opportunities for educated, openly mobile African Americans whose lives were changed because poor folks did the work. And the same thing is true in the last 20 to 25 years. We've seen large churches go up. And in many instances, in my own congregation, I watched my reputation grow. I watched my congregation grow. I watched the impact of the institution. And, and the church that I pastor now for 25 years has grown tenfold in revenue over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. But the members have not grown tenfold. And, and God spoke to me very clearly in 2005 and said, it's not enough to build a strong institution. We had five corporations. At one point, we had over 100 employees. But, but, but rather, uh, are you building strong families? And that's when my own experience of living paycheck to paycheck, running for bill collectors, came to the fore. And, and the system that God gave me for me was a system that I shared with my congregation and then I wrote it down, and, and now we're teaching people around the country. Uh, it is biblically based. It is culturally relevant, re relevant and it is you know, strategically strategically viable. So whether, you, whether you're making $12 an hour on your first job or whether you're making a million dollars a year as a professional basketball player, the same system and the same principles apply, and that's what we call D3. So, but tell us a little bit about you. Let's let's roll back for a second. Who is Lester Love? Tell us your story. Uh, I was going to ask you to tell me yours because yours is so fascinating. Um, I, I love stories, and I know the the power of them. Uh, I um, I grew up basically uh, in Greater St. Stephen was when I began to get any type of notoriety. I'm a son of Bishop Paul Morton. He's my spiritual father and pastor. He grew me up in ministry, and. I was serving as his first assistant. I grew from, I started off working as a greeter. I worked through all the way through the phases of ministry. I ended up being Bishop Moore's first assistant. Well, a church not far from his uptown location uh, fell on some hard times because the pastor got sick, and I'm just there in the meeting as the first assistant. I'm there serving my pastor. And he said, uh, this was Christmas Day, uh, 16 years ago now. He said, I'm going to loan you Elder Love for 90 days. Oh. He never talked to me about it. He never said what I thought about it. Cause I was so content. I would have gone to heaven carrying Bishop Moore's briefcase. I was right. fine. 
I was making more money than the average pastor. I was traveling all across the world. I was having a blast. Bishop Morton kicks me out because he said, I'm concerned about your future. And now uh, here we are 16 years later, second location. It's really, it's 17. It's really 17 years because the first seven years we were doing fine. Then Katrina came and blew everything up. We had to start all over again. We had to start from zero. People all over the country, you have to reteach worship and wealth and all of these things that we have to teach. And I've got an amazing, incredible church. I love them with all of my heart. Very innovative, very loving, orderly, vibrant, operating in the spirit of excellence. Uh, this is our, as a matter of fact, our church T-shirt I'm modeling for me for you right now. Uh, and um, that's basically my story. I, I still serve as okay. my pastor, Bishop Morton. I will for the, to the day I die. I was so proud to see him on CNN today with uh, Frederica Winfred, Winfield as he goes on to the next phase of his uh, international ministry. Uh, so that's, that's who we are, and that's who the right. city is. Love our church, love our people, and we're looking forward to December 7th and 8th. I saw your daughter in Nashville leading worship at yeah. the leadership conference. Uh, mm. Very talented, very attractive, very vibrant. Mm -hmm. Brent, very committedly to the movement, to the Lord. Uh, tell us about your family. Uh, Pastor Fran Love uh, works along with me in ministry. Incredible woman of God. Great preacher in her own right. I tell people, if they ever would have hear my wife preach, they'd never want to hear me again. She's the, she's a preacher uh, herself. She manages <laughs> oh. our Saturday worship experience. Uh, my right. three girls, you talked about joy. Uh, it's got the kiss of God on her life. Uh, she's got a very unique, special anointing on her life to, life to lead people into the presence of God. Very passionate. She works right alongside me in ministry. Uh, my second girl, Faith, if you ever see Faith, is my twin with hair. Uh, she's a freshman in, in college at UNO, uh, going into acting uh, and, and record producing. Great gift, uh, very highly prophetic. And my baby girl, Angel, uh, Angel, I, her name is Angel Leslie. I call her Angel Lester because I don't have a boy, so I got to tag her with my name. <laughs> uh, but a precious spirit, a uh, great writer. Uh, as a matter of fact, today all of them operated in ministry uh, today with a performance that we did. Uh, so I got a great crew, great family. Uh, I am uh, the youngest of 21. 21 uh, what? Brothers and sisters. Lord help. That's not a brother. That, that's not a family. That's a tribe. Right. Yeah. Well, they, they, they named a the record after my dad. Um, the Temptations did a record after my dad. Pop was Pop a was <laughs> well, uh, But I'm Lester Jr. You saved his name for me. Uh, right. He taught me how to be a man, how to work, uh, how to get up. Every, he taught me how to tie my tie and shine my shoes, shake a hand, take care of my family. Uh, Bishop Paul Martin taught me how to be a man of God. Uh, so those are the two men that made the greatest impact in my life. That is great. That is great. So we're getting together uh, next week. Yeah, I'm coming to back to New Orleans. What's the temperature like down there? Very comfortable. I'm in I'm in short sleeve. I just left the gym. I had shorts on. Comfortable weather. Um, I, I'm first very, of all, very, very. Because I I am I mean I, I travel as an evangelist sometimes, and I I'm, I may dabble in the prophetic every now and then. I don't think I've reached the level of apostolic anointing yet. I teach, but at the heart of it, I'm a pastor. Um, and so I know what it means to, first of all, leave your church on a Sunday, to leave your church anytime, and then a first Sunday. Uh, we all know what that means in this uh, realm of what we do. Uh, so I want to tell you thank you for making the sacrifice uh, to come and be with us. I thought it was important, and as I prayed about it, I'm glad that the calendar opened up, that you would get to us before Christmas. Right. I love holidays. I love Thanksgiving more than any of them because there's no strings attached to it. We can just right. come together and play spades. Um, but Christmas, we go into um, this thing. I thought about today, you know, whatever they name de develops an attraction to it. So now you've got Black Friday. You've got Cyber Monday. And they start putting these names on. Now we attract and feel like we have to do something that I thought was important would come before Christmas to get begin to get at least us thinking in the right direction when it right. comes to this thing about money. Well, um, I, I'm honored to come. You, you, you are one of the strategic personalities, and your church is one of the strategic churches in the country. Uh, all churches are important. All pastors are equal. But there's some places 
that are key factors as we attempt to spread this word in an organic way. I have no big machine behind me. We have no big budget. We have two part-time staff people uh, and the rest volunteers. We, we are literally taking all of the proceeds from our book sales, putting it back into the movement just to spread the word, training churches, charging them fees, because we believe that this, this, first of all, we believe that this economic movement is the last great movement for African Americans to uh, conquer. Secondly, what, what's, what's missing as we talk about uh, the, the financial status of black people, what's missing is an understanding of the spiritual nature of the problem. It's one thing to know that we have an income gap, but it's something more important, I think, to know that there are spiritual causes behind the gap. And so what happens is our, our theology drives our economy, but we often separate the two. Mm -hmm. And you understand that the church will become one of the demonstration churches, not only for full gospel, but for the country, because you, your leadership is, is home towards strategy. Mm -hmm. A lot of pastors can preach, mm -hmm. and we're taught how to preach. We can imitate preachers. We can buy sermons. Right, but right. once we finish with that 30 to 40 minutes, the question is, who can execute a strategy? You know, uh, I, I talk about models of leadership. We right. are still, in large measure, influenced by the Moses model of leadership. Yeah. Now, Moses didn't make it to the promised land. Yeah. I'm influenced by the Nehemiah model of leadership, where Nehemiah built the wall and lived to talk about it. Yeah. So I think we need to, we, we really need to expand our perspective on leadership to not to dismiss Moses, but to expand Moses into a Nehemiah model where we're actually building something with the resources that government's available. So I'm excited about coming to you because you get this in ways that very few pastors do. And I'm happy to partner with you and with uh, the City of Love because many churches will be blessed as a consequence of what happens in your church. I'm, I'm inviting every pastor. I'm personally calling every pastor that I know. I am personally sending out a letter to every pastor that I know. Uh, I'm sending out every email, text message, uh, not just for a full house. That, that, that's, that's secondary. I want the people right. to begin to think in this motion, in this way. Moses is a mindset. It, Moses is a mindset. Right. Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses right. mind is dead. Um, Walt Disney, one of my models, said this. He said, the problem with the world is we forget what it's like to be 12 years old. And that means that many times we get so entrenched into what we know that our greatest enemy is not what we don't know. Our greatest enemy is what we already know. Because it gets right. in the way of something fresh and new. And the, the I mean... The, the the validity that you come with, this enough. This is alone enough for the whole world to want to hear what you have to say. Because you did a special on CNN, Soledad O'Brien. Okay, I kind of, that, that, that's a little easy to grasp. Soledad is one of us. Okay, right. but right. that credential comes to you. Out right. of all of the financial experts and all of the other people who have great things to say and do, and say, you are the voice for the people that we want to reach. We're not trying to sell a product. We're not trying to sell insurance. We're going to get behind you. And Prudential has as much of a chance of failing as a meteor hitting the world and blowing it up. Now, it could happen, right. but it's a like right. trillion <laughs> percent chance that it will. For them to come to, of all the people in the world, and we talk about favor, and I know it's a season of triplicate favor, and I know when the should meet out the season of the release, and I know all of that, I got that. But for them to come to you, that, mean, that means they vetted you, they've checked you out, they've walked your system, they've got metrics in their system to say exactly how things are going to work, and they came to you. Uh, so I had to come see it for myself. I came to New Jersey to the D Free Conference. And I, you know, I grew up with Bishop, I grew up traveling with Bishop Martin. So I've been to every church. I've been to everybody's church. White church, black church, black church big church, small church, Kojic, everybody. And I'm seldom impressed when I see a church, because I've seen everything. 
seen all kinds of churches. Rod Parsley, T.D. Jakes, Noel Jones, all the big boys that you see. I was so impressed by not just the church building, but all the stuff around it, the property, <laughs> the senior citizens' home. The, 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 so many things. Um, when it's all over, they're going to ask the question, can anything good come out of New Jersey? And the answer is no. <laughs> Uh, I think you have uh, entertainment in your portfolio because you certainly can uh, capture our imagination <laughs> and expand on the text. Uh, but listen, I'm looking forward to coming down. Uh, we'll be together Sunday morning and then Monday night and Tuesday night. Describe for uh, those who, who, are, who are listening in what's going to happen Monday night and Tuesday night. Uh, Sunday is, my people uh, in the city of love are, are very interesting people. Um, first of all, the, the greater majority of my church, we, we have some great seasoned citizens. I love them to death. We've got a lot of young people. But the greater percentage of my church are millennials. A lot of them, um, all they know about church is what I taught them about church. Because our church mm -hmm. is so unique and kind of different from everybody else's. So the, the we haven't had... Uh, a revival or a conference and all of this in so long. So yeah. I thought it was I thought it was wise on my part to say, you know what? He'll he'll minister Sunday and he'll speak for himself. <laughs> and Monday and Tuesday, we're gonna lay out some groundwork of what to do. And then uh, I've already got my twelve ambassadors of people that's gonna carry the system out after you're gone. If a preacher comes to preach for you and you're not sitting down taking notes on, on stuff he says and catch out in the atmosphere, he was ineffective. He was ineffective. Right. So when you leave, we know that there's going to be a residue. that you, when you're, you're a seed. So it's our responsibility to carry the system out. I've assigned 12 brilliant ambassadors, people who already have a financial background, very, very smart, but you're going to begin to tell us what to do. And then I think it's my responsibility as a leader to make sure to do the best I can to make sure that it gets done. I heard the testimonies when I was at the mm -hmm. conference of a pastor uh, who literally, who literally, through your teaching, saved um, $40,000 a month. $40,000 a month. I literally right. heard heard a pastor in the in the position of a lot of people. They they got more on their back than they got in the bank. We got Benzes and Lexuses and Beamers and no money in the bank. Then I gotta bury you, and you struggling. Yeah. And we get mad at other people for the things that we are frustrated with ourselves. So if somebody don't give us any money, we get mad because you know you broke anyway. We hate in other people what we don't like about ourselves. So right. I. This is going to be the beginning of uh, the something that's going to trans not just change us. Change is good, but change is temporary. Transformation is forever. Tamika, uh, talk to Bishop Love about some of the things that have been happening when you train church leaders to do deep free and the kind of uh, issues that you emphasize. Most of the time when we do uh, deep free leader training, the biggest draw initially is the impact on revenue, of course. Church leaders are concerned about saving their churches. You know, they want to help individuals, but the bottom line is normally the church is in need of something. So that's the first thing that we deal with, is that you can't save your church or help your church until you help the people. And so that's one of the biggest things that we cover first. Um, in terms of benefits, we've seen clergy leaders themselves go through the defree process and realize that it's one of the most necessary things for their church because they themselves needed to get out of some financial bondage. So we have one church leader in Indianapolis whose testimony really is that he had to check himself before he could check anybody else about what he wanted to do with his finances. And now his church uses him as an example in terms of what is possible uh, with D-Free. Uh, we just did our biggest leader training during the conference and we had about 120 leaders in a room in the basement of our church and the conversation, I'm not a pastor, I'm an entertainment attorney by trade, but in speaking to leaders, um, you know, and really getting to the heart of what their people are concerned about, 
you know, we dealt with issues of, of tithing, we dealt with issues of giving, but we also dealt with issues of people who have the heart of God, but don't feel like they have the heart of God because they don't have the pockets that they think God, you know, means for them, and they're not being responsible for it. So we've seen um, just tremendous testimonies around what, what people are seeing in their individual churches and what they know they need to do for themselves. And it's really not, you know, it's eye-opening for them to hear from regular people what their real issue is and yeah. that their financial predicament is getting in the way of them and God. And so to be able to share with leaders that your people need you more on this than almost any other biblical subject ever because they can't get to God the way they need to because they feel like there's this financial barrier between them and God. And so that's been the biggest thing, I think, for me in training leaders. Yeah, Bishop Love, you've been around all of the big name preachers who have been on television. Uh, you know, Bishop Jones, you mentioned him. Bishop Jakes, you mentioned him. Bishop Jones said to me this. He said, we've been preaching name it and claim it for almost 30 years. And if it worked, if that if that were all we needed, we'd all be millionaires now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jakes came right out and said, listen, we were just wrong that we did not teach people the strategy and we convinced people that all it was faith and God would bless them. And 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 I was shocked to hear them say that they you know that they're chain in terms of uh, revenue, size, following, name recognition. I just think, you know, I just think we're in a season where people are, are more ready than we've been in a long time to get some tools, develop some strategy, and to really get into the process and the system of prosperity and not just the slogans of prosperity. Yeah, yeah, we had to um, do something to build the faith of the people of God. Uh, and whatever, however long a season is, that was a great season to get us to begin to speak it out of our mouths. But I heard you say something interesting, two things. Um, and as I'm sitting there, I'm saying, man, no wonder we connected, because we say the same things in, in different places. Um, right. And that is, everybody that got a breakthrough had to do something. Right. One woman had to crawl on the ground. Another man had right. to crawl on the tree. So in my church... I've been in church all my life. I know Jesus. He's a rock in a weary land. He's my shelter in the time of storm. He make a way out of no way. Jesus. I got all of that. But I also call Jesus opportunity because Jesus was always passing by. But everybody that got something had to do something. So God ain't going to drop a million dollars out of the sky because I mean, he, if he gives me a million dollars, and I got a $30,000 mindset, before it's all over, I'm going to be back down to 30. So right. you could do something, and this is why I know, not I think, not just I believe, I know that this is the answer. <laughs> the pr proven strategy. And again, I'm not going to cast aspersion on anybody else, right. but my church will tell you, we studied other people. Because we've always had a sense of this. I know, I know my lane, okay? My, my lane for ministry is personal development, how to make you better. So we started looking for other people, models, as you mentioned. But the models didn't fit where I believe my people are. Yeah. This is what I know is for us. Because you speak our language. You and I got the same demon attacking us, this Thai devil. Right. Right? Hiding right. ties and all of this stuff and buying, you know, just, yeah. you can speak our language and break it down to where the common man can hear you gladly. Well, listen, I'm excited about uh, just coming to City of Love in New Orleans in the wintertime. I'm excited about our relationship. You, you have influence and connection with people that I don't even know exist. And I think as God. God kind of weaves together the type of movement uh, for the place to the same goal, the same God, along to join forces as we did the civil rights movement to really make an impact to the economy of our people. Uh, I believe in measurable outcomes. If you can't measure it, then for me, you haven't done a complete job. And mm -hmm. you think that way, 
you lead that way. I'm, I'm so honored to be coming. I'm excited to meet the family, your church family, all of those millennials, people trying to figure out how to get to church. You may need a book on how to get millennials to go to church because yes. your, your church has defied the culture, and that's something that you need to talk about. You, you need to be teaching church leaders about that because I go to these conventions, and, and 80% of the people are over 60. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not even semi-millennials. <laughs> but listen, uh, we're, we're going to uh, we're going to a sign off, say good night uh, to all of the Bishop Love uh, followers on Twitter, Periscope, all of the other platforms that he saturates. Thank you for joining us and, and sticking with you, Bishop. And uh, go ahead, you, you have another. Yeah, I, I want you to do one thing for me because okay. just, just give me just one one strategy one what's the what what is I know it's a lot I, I know it's a whole it's a whole system but but give me one thing that the average person can do very simply to yeah. begin to dig themselves out of this bondage of debt, delinquency, and deficiency. Oh, sure. uh, you know, the first step of be free start, and one of the first things we teach people to do, challenge people to do, and get people to do, is write down every penny that they spend, every new they buy, every soul that they purchase, every sandwich. You know, uh, that's the day. person takes their last to work every day over their year. They'll save one twenty. Taking lunch to work and taking the money they would have spent and investing that money instead of the money. And so, in, in, in my in my quest, I used to say to my father, uh, I don't know how money goes because I don't need money every month. And he'd say, It doesn't leave home to sleep. Write down every bit and you want to discover that there's more you need. We don't need any high teachers. We'll discover to spend more money at Starbucks and spend five dollars. I don't have to spend money. Dr. So I think I can once, once we do that, that's one that's where we find out where your money's going. You can make the shift, the decisions, the strategies to give yourself a raise. Okay, uh, they, they, they're telling me you're coming across a little choppy. Um, I think the internet, the Wi-Fi may be, you know, we know how that signal is swirling, goes in and out. But what I believe you said was that this is where the work is going to come in. This is where I think our people miss it. You got to write down, he said, yes, sir. where your money is going. Here's the Bible. Write the vision, make it plain. Because at the end of the day, I believe many of us, we just don't know where we are. Right. We got another check coming next every next two weeks, and we just figure we're gonna figure it out. So I, he came across choppy, but to all of our listeners, all of my listeners, Periscope, all of his, the first thing is we gotta start thinking about writing it down. Now, 21st century, yeah. write it right in your notes. <laughs> so easy. So it's going to take a change of mindset. It ain't gonna be naming and claiming and blabbing and grabbing and money gonna fall out the sky. Got to put some work in. So the first thing we got to start thinking towards writing it down. Don't be bringing it, just bring it to the altar and laying hands on it and think it's going to disappear and burn it up and God's going to fly away and all of that. No, 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 no. All that's good. I want that. The first strategy you need to start thinking about writing it down. It's going to take some work, but if you put in the work, you'll get the reward. I think that's, the, that's one of the dangers of the credit card. Is that we don't track spending when we're charging the same way we track spending when we're spending. And so the credit card gives a feeling of having more money, but actually losing money because we're spending money we don't have and it's going places that we haven't tracked. Right. Bishop Love, thank you. We've got to press on and do some updates, but I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, I need to talk to you probably tomorrow about uh, just a few more details regarding books and travel, but we'll do that. Listen, uh, this is Bishop Dutton from the City of Love in New Orleans, Louisiana. We thank God for your vision. Pray for our in New Orleans, December 6th, 7th.
day. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Bye, Bishop Love. So the speaker will deal with a man who is just on fire for Detroit, as you can see. Absolutely. The uh, man is totally excited. Uh, he's got a church full of excited, exciting young people. And I'm looking forward to going out there. We identify three many team. Uh, unlike most pastors, he's he's using me to to actually launch something and, and not to do the whole thing. So so it's great. So tell me what you've been working on. Uh, tell 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 our our audience, our partners, our uh, what would you call it? Our network, what you've been working on since the conference. We haven't talked about the conference, have we? Yeah, we haven't even talked about the conference. Um, <laughs> if anybody out there uh, knows us, we normally meet monthly. Uh, we didn't get a chance to give you guys an update, but our D our fourth annual D3 conference was a tremendous success. We, I believe, doubled our participation. We normally expect anywhere from 400 to 500 people to visit us per day, and I think we topped out at probably close to seven or 800 per day this year. Um, we had more people than we could move around, so we sat people where they were and we moved our speakers around. And people really got what they needed financially. We had the money code for Nat Calfani Cox. We had Prudential, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, uh, City National Bank. We had Bishop Lester Love. We had our couple from South Africa who were with us on our last D Free webinar to talk about D Free in South Africa. Uh, we had Angela Yee from Power 105, one the Breakfast Club here in New York, uh, to talk about her financial journey. Um, we had over 200 young people join us. Um, so it was a tremendous success. Following the conference, we also had uh, our 2016 seminar, well, getting ready for 2016, our budgeting workshop at First Baptist, which we live, stre we live streamed it. Um, I think we'll post some notes up from it on the website soon, so just stay tuned for that. And we also launched D-Free Brooklyn. So we have several churches in Brooklyn that will be launching D-Free at their individual churches or in groups. Uh, we work with Bridge Street Financial, Bridge Street Development Corporation to launch, and so that's where we were last Sunday. And I will say we have one last D free launch training coming up on Saturday, December 12th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It'll be at First Baptist in New Jersey, but also live streamed to the world. So if you have a church or an organization that wants to start D free, for the coming 2016 year and you want to get started as soon as it hits, we encourage you to participate in this training. Um, it will be an opportunity for you to ask questions and you will get everything you need to know about getting D3 started. So we've been busy. It's been a very, very packed year for us, but we're just excited that D3 continues to grow and that people continue to benefit from, you know, what we're sharing. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting, uh, as, as you know, and as I tell everybody, I, I started this uh, in 2005 at First Baptist to address a need at First Baptist. I, I, I had no vision for ministry outside of First Baptist. I had no plans for ministry outside of First Baptist. I, I didn't even plan to write a book. In fact, the book that I had to write had more to do with church on foster care and adoption than I did anything else, and it was uh, after five years of doing D3 for practice that it became urgent to write the book and the workbook. Um, people think the organization, people sometimes send us email and say, I called your office and nobody answered, and I was saying, well, that's funny because we don't have an office. <laughs> we don't have any staff. Um, Talk, talk about therefore, what we need churches to really understand that they're going to be free and become a church. Just talk about some details and give them some examples of what they'll really take. We can well. Right. So if you're looking to start D-Free, the, one of the, the major things that people need to understand is that, first of all, D-Free, first and foremost, is a ministry within the church. So you have to treat it as if you're starting a ministry within your church. It takes people, it takes time, it takes enthusiasm, it takes leadership. Um, and we tell most churches or organizations that you need at least three people to get started. One person to lead it, one person to handle the administrative part of you know getting people signed up, making sure logistics are in place, and then one person to actually train. 
And so once you have a team of people that are committed to getting DFree launched, you participate in our launch training. It takes about three hours, and we will sit and go through all the content with you. We'll go through all of your questions around logistics. But for the most part, it really is pick a team, pick a date that you're going to start, get trained, and get started. That's it. It's not that difficult, but I think what where most people get hung up on is there's a confusion around needing to go through D free on your own, which for most, which for some people is necessary. But then there's also a need to just understand that it is a ministry, and you really just set it up, pick a date, and you work towards you know launching the program on that date or launching the movement yeah. on that date. Um, so that's well, what I would say. Well, you say. don't have to be a financial expert to lead the process. We're not talking right. really about teaching money. But a D free leader is actually guiding people through a process. Right. In many instances, I know when we first started First Baptist, our first D free leader was going through the process himself. He mm -hmm. got in front of the whole church and admitted that he was drowning in debt. He worked in finance, but he mm -hmm. was broke. And uh, even even I have had struggles that I've had to help people through while I was going through myself. So this is not a financial expert-led movement. In fact, what we found is that the best people to lead the D3 sessions are not financial experts because financial experts take over people. But this is an experience. We talk, for instance, for those who don't know, we talk about uh, writing down everything you spend the way we talked about with Bishop. We just made a list of the purchase your needs. I have been alarmed at how many grown people have never actually separated their wants from their needs. We talk about advertising. You know, this this consumer culture is a beast. And I was watching uh, TV last night. In my talks, you know, I talk about the man who is who is a good-looking man selling uh, Old Spice mm -hmm. wife, right? The Old Spice is for me. Right. Well, I saw an Agra ad the other day. When I was home over these three days, I watch more TV than I normally do. I saw a Viagra ad with a good-looking woman, and obviously the woman was designed to attract me, but the product she was selling uh, was a man's product. So so what, what I'm suggesting is that we need to take time to ask God the Holy Spirit to empower us to, to discern these ads, advertisements are crafted by psychologists who get into our psyche and they drive us to spend more money. The D3 curriculum is that. There's a session in D3 where we actually ask people to discuss and identify ads mm -hmm. to really pick them apart to ensure that we can understand what the system is doing to drive our spending. Right. So right. it's really it's really uh, it's really important to attend the training because when you attend the training you can hear about what's happened and what's worked in other churches, and you can take the time to look at the materials, consider your options. It's it's more material per session than you can get through in one session. So you do have to make some decisions about which set of materials you'll use in, in the sessions or the classes and which you'll assign people to do at home. Um, but it is not, as as you said, Tamika, it, it is not something that you have to be an expert in to lead. And and that's why Bishop Love likes it, because it's it's normal people helping normal people right. get free from financial slavery. Yeah. Through normal, uh, practical... Let's talk about our partnership in Brooklyn. All right. So in Brooklyn, we are in partnership with Bridge Street Development Corporation, which is a community development organization um, that helps people with home ownership issues, with senior housing, with general financial related issues, and they work directly with clergy across central Brooklyn to provide programming and support for those churches and for the congregations in, you know, within those churches. We did a clergy leadership breakfast with them back in October, where we invited leaders out to hear Pastor Sori speak. Um, he preached and kind of laid the foundation of what D3 is all about. Um, that was actually hosted in partnership with Brooklyn Borough, the Brooklyn Borough President. It was at Brooklyn Borough Hall, um, which really helped to set the tone for what D3 looks like um, in Brooklyn. And then we went back and did training with them last week during the D3 launch, and we offered several workshops um, during the training. 
what we like to do when we go, when D3 is invited to work with a region, we try to get a local partner there who already has relationships with churches and can really help to execute on the ground. So now we have a trusted partner who understands D3, who can help answer questions um, and feel support and requests for us. You know, as Pastor mentioned, we don't have a large team. And one of the, you know, one of the things that allows us to do the work that we do is having local partners on the ground. So we have a partner in Bridge Street who's really helping us to get churches up and running. We were able to give away D Free Starter Kits to two organizations, which include 24 books, 24 workbooks, D Free Pledge Cards, uh, and the D Free Leader Guide, so that they can get their training started in January. And so we will have, as of January 2016, one individual church as well as multiple chamber of commerces um, who will be offering D free training in the Brooklyn market and will be training additional churches in January. So we're there, we're on the ground, we have people getting the support that they need and um, people can go through Bridge Street Development Corporation to get to us or reach out to us at info at mydfree.org if you're in or around the Brooklyn area um, and we can get you set up there. Yeah, that's uh that's critical to me. Our strategy assumes that we're not going in to set up anything anywhere. Right. It's it's what um, the industry calls a turnkey operation. Mm -hmm. We want to work with people who are already on the ground. We want to equip them, empower them, and make D free theirs. Yep. I'm not interested in setting up offices. I'm not interested in setting up a big bureaucracy. We are attempting to right. attract more uh, resources simply to serve churches better and other nonprofit organizations. You know the Delta Sigma Theta sorority is involved with D3. We want to serve them. Uh, we anticipate next year working with the National Bar Association. Ben Crump <clears throat> has expressed an interest in bringing D3 to that organization. We want to serve them. Uh, one, one of the great tragedies of the modern age is that unlike the civil rights movement, black leadership has become such a business that many black people can't even afford the resources mm -hmm. that are made available to so-called right. help them. And what we want to do is be affordable, accessible, and humbly serve our people to ensure that they can achieve the results that other immigrant groups have achieved. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching with great anticipation this whole Syrian refugee issue because uh, every time we open our doors, as we should, to humanitarian outreach for Vietnamese, Laotian, Cambodian refugees. Those refugees end up owning businesses, selling fish, doing nails, and kind of leaving us in the economic dust while, while, while we are, you know, voting for candidates, protesting and marching, uh, but we're broke. Right. And, and while I, I think that we should always have a humanitarian spirit uh, my, my focus is on the one community that has contributed the most to this country but is disproportionately right. stuck at the bottom of the economic ladder and that's black people. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot is, you know, changing the systems and, and the overall economic position that African Americans are in, but also through the D3 process, helping people to understand the personal responsibility that we have to manage our finances in a better way, wherever we are, are economically. And so, you know, that's kind of our two-pronged approach with, with God and the Bible on our side to really help drive um, a stronger financial agenda for African Americans. Yeah. And so that's what we're working towards. And we do it one email at a time, one phone call, one visit, yeah. one group of churches at a time. So thank you guys. Um, for just inviting us in and allowing us to be there as a resource to help you and your people. That's pretty great. Now, of course, finally, um, you know that we've got some things coming from abroad. Uh, the last year of the conference, the ambassador from Jamaica to the U.S. was here. Mm -hmm. uh, she was just leaving office, going back to Jamaica. In 2016, we intend to start D Free in Jamaica. Uh, primarily through the American companies that do business in Jamaica, inviting us to come to work with employees, and so that's very exciting. We're opening an office in Johannesburg, South Africa, to cover all of Southern Africa, Botswana, uh, 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 Botswana, Zimbabwe. and uh, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. 
starting in South Africa with piloting towards the end of January, and then I plan to go over in, uh, in, in April. We have a D-Free club that we didn't even know about. Uh, there, there was I shipped a box of D-Free books when they first came out to Ghana, and uh, Andy Dadson, our Ghanaian coordinator of all of our African work, uh, gave a book to a friend, gave her book actually to a friend, and uh, two years later she found out that her friend had started a D-Free club, they meet monthly, they, yeah. <laughs> they do projects together, and uh, they're prepared to support and expand in Ghana uh, whenever, whenever we can get there. Liberia, uh, I did a lecture series at the Baptist Seminary in Liberia two years ago. I was going back last year, but Ebola stopped me, and, and we have Liberians who are prepared to launch Deep Free there. We have a church in London, England, that is going to launch Deep Free in 2016. And uh, there's one other place that I didn't mention, but we are in Africa. We we are we'll be back in Africa in in April. We're going to sponsor actually the D Free Foundation is going to sponsor a trip to Ghana in October. It's mm -hmm. going to be a nine day trip where we'll be hosted by the king. We'll visit the palace. We'll visit the slave uh, palaces of the olden days. We'll visit the governmental office. We'll go to the home of W. E. B. Du Bois. Uh, we'll, we'll visit a couple of banks, we'll go out to the rural areas, and so I'm hoping people will start saving their money now. It'll go up on the website right around New Year's, and anyone who's never been to West Africa, anyone who's never been to Ghana, trust me, every penny that you spend will be worth the trip. It's inspiring, it's challenging, it's mm -hmm. educational, uh, and it's, it's a life-changing experience. The first time I went to Ghana, I didn't want to come home. And I think you'll find the Guinean people the most friendly people on planet Earth. And you'll see things that you would never see unless you went to Ghana uh, under the auspices of a major king who owns gold mines and thousands of acres of land, has started a university for agriculture. It's just a phenomenal experience. So D3 has gone international with our broke selves. <laughs> but as long as we... Being broke is not a problem as long as you don't borrow money and spend more than that. Right. So right. spend we're what we have. You, you use what we have. We're working right. within our means. That's what within we're doing. our means. And and Absolutely. I hope we are able to do something in Philadelphia. We've got so many churches in yes. Philadelphia that have come to our meetings, that have expressed interest, that are using the materials. I'm hoping between now and Easter we can have some kind of event at either E9 or Triumph or one of the churches that we work with in Philadelphia. Absolutely. So to make I'm sure that when you went to uh, law school to become a big entertainment mogul, never in your wildest dreams did you think you'd be a Baptist missionary. <laughs> no, but I get to wear regular clothes, thank God. He knows my heart. <laughs> um, but I'm thankful. This, is, um, this has been a tremendous experience for me. It's been two years that we've been doing this, and um, I'm excited, I'm energized, and we're going to keep rolling. That's great. Now, uh, do we have the capacity to see questions and answer questions or no? Yep, I'm actually in the live chat answering questions now, so if you've seen me put my head down, it's because I'm typing. Um, oh, really? Well, why can't I see the questions? You have to log in, go to mydefree.org slash webinar. That's where no, no, the that's chat is. That's, yep, that's it's too fine. much. That's too much. Is there a question um, that you think I should address? I have a question right now from Mark D04 who's asking. They came to the conference and they want to get started in Cincinnati, I believe. Um, I'm going to answer your question oh, really? out loud and then I'll type it back. Um, this person came to the conference, they attended the ambassador training, how can we jumpstart in the region? Start. Pick a date and teach class. That's what I'm going to tell you. And email me separately. And we'll but you know what we are going to do, uh, Jamaica? Uh, we are, I'm going to talk to Ibel either tomorrow or Tuesday. We are going to schedule a conference call for the 61 people that went through ambassador training. Okay, yes. Um, and we're going to get that done before the 15th of December. <clears throat> I want to hear what their questions are. I've got to go over the content that, that was presented and then give them some suggestions on what we what the plan is for 2016. Excellent. So you heard that. Right. Um, you guys will have an ambassador call before the holidays to get started on Next Steps. Definitely. If there are folks online who actually came to the conference and went through the D3 training, you guys should have received the presentation that we shared during the Passion Leaders training as well as links Correct. to training online, 
um, access to the D Free Leadership Guide. If you have not received that information, it is a rather um, it's a fairly large email just because of um, the amount of content that you get. Please email us at info at mydfree.org if you're missing anything and we will get you uh, squared away. I haven't gotten many uh, questions, but I just want to make sure everybody has what they need. And like I said, we're a small but mighty team. There's probably about three of us that answer that email box on a regular basis, so bear with us, but we'll get to you and get you taken care of. Yeah, and all three have something else to do so they can pay their rent. Listen, uh, I need everyone also to follow us on Instagram, it's at MyDFree, on Twitter, it's at my on Facebook, and not only follow us, but like what you see, share it, repost it, spread the word. Um, we, we'd, like, we'd like people to hear about it, but we'd like them to hear about it through you. If right. someone follows you, they'll take your advice before they'll take my advice. Right. And so this is not a top-down movement. This is a bottom-up movement. Uh, you are the leaders. You, you are the encouragers. You are the ones that will make the difference in other people making decisions about their own lives. There are, there are so many young people who are embracing this idea of living within their means, paying mm -hmm. the bills on time, uh, paying as they go, and the freedom, the freedom that comes from living that way is, is indescribable. The Bible does say that the borrower is slave to the lender and slave is controlled by the slave master. And so I'm asking all of you, for your own sake, to take seriously the material that we have. We've got, we probably have 65 videos on, on yeah. YouTube. Um, subscribe, because every time we upload a video, if you subscribe, you'll get a notice uh, in January. Every Monday morning, you'll get a devotional written by me called um, Monday Meditations for Financial Freedom. It's a Bible verse. It's a meditation and a prayer. And then there's a request to make a commitment based on what you just read. Mm -hmm. Our podcast is going up. We're, we're set up to do a D-Free podcast. Our newsletter will start back in January. We've, we've got a whole arsenal of content that we're preparing to release in January, um, and so if you would gear up and get on the team, don't don't just sit back and wait. Get on the team, be a part of the movement. You can do just like Tamika did. Tamika just reached out to me and said, "Look, I'm ready to do some work." And now she's working harder than she ever dreamt she would work. Uh, in fact, she she had no idea I was going to really put her to work. She thought that she'd say it, I wouldn't respond, and that would be it. She'd tell God, "I tried." <laughs> that does not work with me. So, so listen, thank you for your time tonight. It's, it's time to sign off unless there's a question, Tamika, that you think I should answer. Uh, nope, I think we're good. Pastor will not be teaching D-Free next week. He's going to be preaching, and then we'll do some training there to get people on the ground to teach D-Free. Uh, what we do is a train-the-trainer type model. I'm answering a question that came through just now. Um, we do a train-the-trainer type model where we train local leaders and representatives to teach D3 at their particular church or organization. So that's how we work it. You mean on December 12th? Uh, no, December 7th when you're in New Orleans. Are we doing training there? I don't think I, so. I, I'm going to train the 12 leaders. Right. That's going to be Tuesday morning. To Tuesday, uh, Monday and Tuesday night, I'll be presenting portions of the D3 strategy. Got it. Yeah, for individuals. Okay. So, uh, uh, and I'm sure night. it'll be live streamed or something. So we'll try. We'll get a note out um, because I know Bishop Love is so active online. I'm sure we'll have some uh, live streaming or some periscoping or something happening. Yeah, at the very least, it'll be periscope. Right. At the very least, but you can go to you can go to the YouTube page like now. I've got I've got a summary of every step in the DP process on a digital TV show called uh, D Free oh, to right. Be Free. Yep, so you can, you can look at you can you can look at at at, at uh, a seven or eight minute video covering the points from every chapter in the book, every step in the process, right now for free. It's it's all there on YouTube, and then you can see testimonies. The YouTube page is very resourceful. The people who have spent time on YouTube have all responded with a, with a big thank you because the YouTube content. Some of it's homemade, some of it's professional, all of it's good. Right. So, listen, Tamika, thank you for your time tonight. 
Uh, I'm out in the morning, but I, I will be in touch with you um, before the day is over. Okay, perfect. We're all good. Great. We had more than 100 people online tonight. So thank you guys so much for joining nice. us and have an amazing week. Sonia, welcome home. And uh, how do we end this? Do we just end? I can end it.